Okay, next we're going to talk about the complementary angle theorems. These theorems actually kind of come off of the table. If you look at corresponding values of the table, like here, I have sine 30 degrees is one half, but I have one half down over here also. That would be cosine 60. So sine 30 and cosine 60, what we notice about the angles 30 and 60, they add up to 90 degrees. So because you have two different places on the table that are the same, this is actually where the complementary angle theorems come, up, come from. Complementary angles means they add up to 90 degrees. So that's why inside here, if theta is one angle, then 90 minus theta would be the other angle. So let's see if this works. If I have 30 degrees, sine of 30 degrees is one half. If I put 30 in here, that would be 90 minus 30. That would be 60. So that means that sine 30 is equal to cosine 60. Okay, sine 30, one half cosine 60 is one half also. So that also works for cosine and it also works for uh, the tangent. So we have to have the complementary angle theorems for all different, all six different uh, trig functions. And again, it all comes from the table is uh, the idea of, of where we can look at and why we know that these are gonna be true. So these are the theorems. If you wanna pause the video to, to write this down, that's fine. Otherwise, we're gonna go on ahead and we'll do a couple examples based off of the complementary angle theorem. Okay, so here's the first example we'll do here. We're gonna write the equivalent as a cosine expression. So we're gonna take sine 33, we wanna turn it into an equivalent cosine expression. So we're gonna use the complementary angle theorems in order to do this. For sine, we have the very first formula here. Sine theta is the same thing as cosine of 90 minus theta. So my 33, the 33 is going to be my theta. So I'm gonna write the formula out. I have sine 33 is equal to cosine, I'm just gonna plug 33 into the theta here. 90 minus 33. So that's using the first formula and it's writing it out. That allows me to change the sine into a cosine. So both of these are gonna be in terms of degrees. When we subtract them, you're gonna get 57 inside here which means that sine 33 degrees is the same thing as cosine of 57 degrees. So sine 33 should have exact same value as cosine 57. If you don't believe me, check it out on your calculator, put your calculator in degree mode, put in sine 33 in your calculator, put in cosine 57 in your calculator, you should get exactly the same decimal for both of those. That's what the complementary angle theorem says. Okay, so one more, we're gonna use the complementary angle theorems when I find the exact value. So, right now, I have two different degree measurements. One's a 35 and one's a 55. I'd like to change them either all into 55s or all into 35 because I can do some more things to simplify later if all the angles have the same measurement. So, I can either use my complementary angle theorems that I have here to change the, both the 35s and the 55, but that's gonna be a little bit more work. Let's just work with changing the middle one into a 35 since we only have to use the formula once. So secant, the only one I'm allowed to change the secant into would be a cosecant. So I'm only allowed to use this formula. I can't use any of the other ones because I don't have any of them starting with secant. The only one I'm allowed to use is this. So if I do secant 55 degrees, I'll do that here, okay? That's gonna be equal to, here's the formula we're gonna use, cosecant of 90 minus 55, which is equal to cosecant 35. So secant 55 degrees is the same thing as cosecant of 35. So again, the only reason why I'm changing this into a 35 is because I have 35 matching on the other ones. So now instead of secant 55, I'm gonna replace it with cosecant 35. Okay, so let's rewrite that out. I have tangent 35 degrees times, I'm gonna put in cosecant 35, and I have cosine 35 degrees here. So now I have all of them in terms of uh, 35 degrees because I use the complementary angle theorem. Next, what I need to do is I need to simplify this down more. So we talked about before in the past that your sine theta was equal to y, okay? I also know that my cosecant theta is equal to one over y. Well, what I can do here is I can actually generalize this more because I know the y is equal to sine. That's gonna tell me that cosecant theta is the same thing 
as 1 over sine theta. So that's one way that I could change out uh, that one. The cosecant, I could make it turn into a, a sine. Now the tangent, the tangent one, so I'm going to put that here, your tangent theta is equal to the y over the x. So y over x, um, we know what sine theta is y and cosine is equal to x, so I could actually come up with an identity for this one. Sine divided by cosine would be another identity for tangent. Again, it's y over x, the y value is sine from the previous video, the x value is going to be cosine. So now I can change everything all into sines and cosines, which is the way I can actually simplify this one. Your tangent is this, so I'm going to go ahead and put in sine 35 divided by cosine 35. The cosecant there, I, I use this formula down here, 1 over y, same thing as 1 over sine. So that's going to be 1 over 35 degrees, 1 over cosecant, uh, sorry, 1 over sine of 35 degrees. We're using the identity there, so 1 over your cosecant would be the same thing as 1 over sine. So you have that there. Next you're going to do cosine 35, that's, we'll just leave that one uh, as it is. So cosine 35 degrees, that would be over 1. Now that I've changed them all into here, what happens is I can actually cancel a bunch of things out. Sine cancels with sine there. Cosine and cosine cancel out. I'm left with 1 over 1. So 1 over 1 uh, equals 1. So that means that this whole entire thing, that all simplifies down into 1. So we use a combination of complementary angle theorem. We also use our definitions for sine and cosine to manipulate them to equal expression that would allow us to simplify this down more.